my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this lesson on invasion of privacy. Did you know that communication on the internet is not private? In fact, using any form of electronic communication isn't private. Do you mean that people can actually spy on what we're sending? How's that possible? Well, new technology makes it possible to eavesdrop or listen in on any communication taking place. You can also invade people's privacy by sending them messages they do not want. Yo, I never realized that. Is this legal? Well, Salai, if you think about it this way. Unless it's one of the kinds of computer fraud, like hacking and cracking, we've discussed before, then I'm afraid it is. Sure. We look at two kinds of invasion of privacy, and at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the term spam mail and cookies. Do you know that in September 2004, South Africa passed an amendment to the law giving permission for the police department to set up a monitoring mechanism where emails and other electronic communications and network traffic may be legally intercepted? Are you saying that the police could be reading our emails all the time? Well, they wouldn't want to most of the time, and even if they did, they would have to get permission from the court, and this would only be given if the person was a suspect in a crime. Well, I suppose that's a good thing, but I'm not sure if I like the idea of the possibility that someone could be looking at my emails. Few people actually realize that most emails are stored in computers called servers as they pass to different recipients. In fact, you have no idea where your words or information may end up. You should always remember that on the internet, nothing ever completely disappears and nothing can be completely controlled. Sure, that's really scary. Well, I suppose it is, especially since email has become such a big part of people's lives. Mm, it sure has. I mean, I check my email almost every day. But the one thing I hate is when I open up my inbox and I find it full of emails from companies and people that I actually don't even know. That's called spam mail. Spam is the internet version of junk mail. The term spam actually refers to a means of flooding the internet with many copies of the same message in an attempt to force the message on people who would not otherwise choose to receive it. You will notice that most spam is advertising, often for strange products or get-rich-quick schemes. How do these people make money off spam mail anyway? I mean, don't people find them irritating and delete them without reading them? Yes, people do find spam irritating and they do delete it. But because sending emails is cheaper than any other kind of communication, these emails cost the sender very little. They rely on the fact that even if one person responds, then they will make money. So it costs them nothing. So any sales and money they make from spam mail thus becomes a profit. How do these spammers get our addresses anyway? Well, email spam lists are created by scanning user groups, stealing internet mailing lists, or searching the web for addresses. Receiving spell causes my mailbox to be so full. How can I prevent spam? Well, you could report this to your ISP and they will filter the amount of spam you receive. In South Africa, there are several companies, for example, SpamCop, that have made websites available for you to report spam mail. These companies will block spam as well as track down the sender to make sure you don't receive any more mail from them. The best we can do as computer users is to report any spam received to a company like SpamCop and of course be spam wise. Remember, don't buy anything from a spam mail and never install any software that is offered freely in spam mail either. Now that we have looked at spam and spam mail, let's examine another area in communication that can be potentially dangerous. Have you ever heard the term cookies? Well, the only kind of cookies I've heard of are the ones you eat, <laughs> but I'm sure you're not talking about those. Well, the cookie I'm referring to is definitely not food. <laughs> a cookie is a file that is saved onto the hard disk of your computer without your knowledge. When you use your internet browser to visit a website, the cookie accesses information about you from your computer. The next time this website is visited, the browser retrieves the information from the cookie and sends that data to the website. In other words, cookie files allow a web server to store information about you on your computer and to retrieve that information to identify you in the future. The two main browsers, Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator, both allow the use of cookies. Does that mean that if I have cookies on my computer, that someone can access all my information? 
No Salai. Only the website that sent you the cookie will be able to access the information it stored. The cookie cannot be used to get data or view data off your hard drive. Cookies can give people access to your personal information if you filled in a form or answered questions on the website itself. For example, the site cannot determine your email address unless you gave it to them. Cookies also cannot give your computer a virus. Allowing a website to create a cookie does not give that or any other website access to the rest of your computer. Only the site that created the cookie can read it. And yet, cookies have a very bad reputation. And why is that? Well, the reason that cookies have had so much bad press recently is that cookies represent a potential loss of privacy. Cookies by design are meant to work invisibly. They're used to track people and their activities. Cookies can be used to build detailed profiles of your interests, spending habits and lifestyle. An innocent use of this information might be to target advertising campaigns to specific groups or individuals. However, it is scary to think that some individual or group might be able to accumulate information about our private activities and personal preferences. So can this information then be used to direct spam mail? Well, that is a possibility. Some unscrupulous group could collect such information and sell it to companies to be used for a range of purposes. Cookies are like a personal tag or tracer. Some people see this as invasion of privacy. However, you must realize that every time you log on to a website, you give away a lot of information. Any website that you visit can determine your service provider, operating system, browser type, CPU type and IP address which is a unique address given to your computer to identify you on the internet. Are cookies a huge problem like spam mail? Actually, the main concern about cookies is that they work without anyone's knowledge or permission. Some people consider the use of this information harmless, but some find the gathering of information in this manner an invasion of privacy. The fear of cookies is based on the loss of privacy. However small, this may lead to more loss of privacy as technology continues its onward march into our lives. Sometimes it is hard to decide which is the bigger threat. Companies selling or illegally obtaining your information, hackers stealing it, or the government keeping an eye on everybody. Here's your task for today. Draw up a poster on the effects of spam mail and ways to prevent it. Display this poster in your computer center. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and don't forget to visit our website for more information. Until next time, goodbye.